Welcome back. Uh, gentlemen, it's about time that we wrap up this session. Uh, I'm going to ask each of you all your closing remarks and your impression of the budget. Tai, could you please start? Sure, thank you. Um, to sum up, as far as I'm concerned, the budget seems to have been crafted uh, with the uh, definite intention to assist uh, the everyday man. Um, we can very much see uh, benefits being granted perhaps to the hardcore poor in so far as uh, the uh, how we call that welfare payments are concerned uh, there are benefits given to uh, to Nasarapan um, in so far as the working man goes there are lots of benefits in so far as exemptions for perquisites uh, and benefits from employment so um, and of course in so far as those who earn a bit more there is the uh, relief uh, and a reduction in personal tax rates. So yes, in so far as the, the, the everyday man is concerned, I think everybody gets a little bit here and there. Uh, I, however, have a little bit of concern in so far as uh, corporations go, uh, notwithstanding the uh, provisions relating to group relief, we do find that uh, um, the announcements seem to have uh, tightened up uh, the ability of companies to claim uh, traditional incentives like reinvestment allowance uh, whereby you know uh, a company needs to be three years in operations now before they could claim uh, the reinvestment allowance as opposed to a situation whereby you, they used to be able to claim it after one year um, withholding taxes uh, the, 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 the scope of withholding taxes seems to have been expanded to cover traditionally non how we call it taxable items like uh, commissions um, guarantee fees, introduces fees and stuff like that. So uh, there is a concern there obviously and the fact the f in, in so far as this area is concerned, how does it relate in so far as uh, the double taxation agreements which Malaysia has entered into with other countries. Uh, obviously there will be a clash there between the domestic act and what's going to be pro what's provided in the double taxation agreement. So there are definitely certain issues for businesses um, especially those uh, dealing with uh, foreign parents, foreign uh, shareholders. So those are the things that I think uh, may concern quite a few people. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks, Tai. I think the budget has also, if you like, addressed the challenges of competing in a global environment. And, and I'm, I'm glad that the government has understood the challenges, especially in terms of human capital and talent management. Uh, whilst the reduction in the you know, top tax rate from 28% to 27% has been argued to only uh, benefit a very small sector or percentage of the tax-paying population. But I believe it is a, a move in the right direction because if we're going to attract top talent to the country, we need to be competitive. And it's not just in terms of tax rates, I do agree, uh, it's, a, it's a more holistic thing, but uh, you know, that is a move in the right direction. And I think the other uh, benefits have been given in terms of uh, getting deductions for recruitment expenses, uh, in terms of exemptions, in terms of postgraduate studies, etc. I think it's all in the right direction of improving our human capital. Uh, it has got wealth creation these days are through human capital. Uh, also, I think the in terms of the various benefits that's given employers, I think it's given the employers the flexibility now to structure their pay packages for their top talent. Uh, and, and I think that's again a, a good benefit and uh, I mean a good move because it now gives companies the ability to be competing effectively for talent. Uh, one of the things that I would perhaps my overall impression is that whilst the budget has been good, it has uh, if like addressed a lot of the needs of the men in the street, but, but I still somehow come away with the feeling that some of this has been more reactive sort of uh, uh, in response and I still I cannot see the more holistic uh, strategic picture that the, that the government should move in. And, I, and I, I wish that in future that the budgets, well, it progresses from year to year, but it should have a greater picture uh, or a greater direction in terms of where, we, where we're wanting to go and where we want to head. All right. Yeah. I, I think in the light of the, the challenging environment we are now in, it seems to me the budget has, it can be broken up into two, two strategies. One really is is a short-term solution, particularly in areas of alleviating the high cost of, of goods and, and, and uh, you know, other, other commodities. Uh, maybe the longer-term one seems to be focused on developing human capital and also uh, attempts to try to bring 
uh, the nation's uh, competitiveness in terms of providing a business environment. So those are longer term measures. But the shorter term measure seems to want to tame the key problems that the country is facing, and that means really essentially transportation and the high cost of uh, goods at this point in time. And, and I think the attempt is, is being taken now you know, to address this in the shorter term, as in some of the reliefs and the rebates that are being given, and of course the allocation in terms of transportation. Uh, so, so given the circumstance uh, that we are in, it seems like you know a, a fairly balanced budget and uh, hugely popular, I would say. Okay. Well, the government has certainly taken steps to deal with the effects of inflation, and inflation is the bane uh, affecting the economy currently. Mm. Uh, but then, if we go to the source of that inflation. Uh, amongst other items, the main one would be oil, the price of oil. And I was glad to see uh, some incentives in relation to hybrid cars and solar PVs. Hmm. Uh, but I wonder whether uh, we can wait that long. Because for every hybrid car that's purchased, there are thousands of existing cars which still run on petrol or diesel. Hmm. And what's going to be done for the uh, fuel on these cars? Uh, we did not hear of any incentives for moving these cars to an alternative energy source. Mm. Uh, for example, in Australia, in, in, in the US, there are grants given by governments there to encourage consumers to move over. We didn't hear much about green taxes either mm. in this budget. Uh, we heard something on uh, uh, carbon em uh, on certificates for emission of uh, uh, being exempt, you know, re exemption on certificates of reduction last year, but not as much this year on green taxes, uh, hybrid cars accepted. Okay. So it, it'd be good if we can address the, the oil problem. This is black gold. Mm. Uh, and uh, they say there are proven reserves of 40 years. So, as time passes, uh, the demand would be there, supply would be dwindling, and price is bound to rise. So, it has to be addressed. Mercedes has said that within seven years, their cars will be f fossil fuel free. We mm -hmm. can't wait seven years. Inflation is still there, and we've got to deal with that problem immediately. And uh, I'm sure my colleagues here, pan panelists, would like to come in on this matter too. All right. All right. It was very enlightening to, to have heard all your views and suggestions as, as to what we just heard on Budget 2009. Um, with that, gentlemen, thank you very much. And once again, thank you, uh, viewers out there, for watching the STARS Budget Roundtable discussion. Bye-bye.